And good afternoon. Welcome to the public hearing uh, regarding the $1.4 million bond as petitioned by the Black Lake Special Use District. This is Tuesday, July 28, 2020. It is now about 3.41 in the afternoon. And by way of introduction, I'm John Hutchings, the chair of the board. To my left is Mr. Gary Edwards. To my right is Vice Chair Mr. Ty Menser. To his right on the bench is County Manager Romero Chavez. And to his right is Amy Davis, our clerk of the board. So welcome. We got people in-house downstairs in room 152. We have people on the phone and we have people zooming in. Uh, number one, I want to thank everybody for your exceptional patience as we sort through this technology and sort through this process of maintaining uh, appropriate distancing and uh, staying within the confines of the, uh, uh, the executive order by the governor. So thank you for your patience. This is a system, oh, if you wanted to call in, if you're watching, the phone number is 360-252-9020, and the PIN number is 1234. There you go. So this is, again, a system. The topic is a system of assessment to fund a $1.4 million bond as petitioned by the Black Lake Use uh, District. The purpose of this hearing is to accept and consider public testimony on the proposed special assessment, generating $103,000 annually to fund a $1.4 million bond with a 20-year term. This is a virtual public hearing. Those wishing to testify have joined via Zoom, phone, or they have emailed in comments or mailed in comments. If you wish to testify, please visit the Thurston County homepage online and select announcements of public hearings on the left-hand side. The information to join this public hearing remotely has been posted in that location. If you do not wish to testify, but would like to listen and follow along, please watch the live stream through the Thurston County YouTube channel to help us manage attendance. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, staff, uh, Tim Wilson, uh, water Resources Manager, if I got the title right. Did I, Tim? You did. Oh, thank you. He's going to provide information on this topic. And uh, then when we get to uh, the Zoom testify, I'll read your name aloud. Uh, I'll read the names on the sign-up sheet, and we'll give people plenty of chance to get from 152 on up. On five groups. Up. And I'm bringing you up five at a time. And the reason I say five at a time is so we can manage, again, the occupancy in this room. For the first go around, I'll just bring up the first four because number one of the five is already in this room. Uh, so I'll we'll be bringing up in, uh, in groups. And then after uh, everybody's had a chance to testify and Zoom and in-person attendees, then we'll get to the conference call if anybody's uh, called in. You each will have three minutes to testify, and I don't care how long it takes. Everybody will get a chance to get three minutes. Time may not be given to another person. And when you're called on, please state your name and your address for the record. And the clerk of the board, Amy Davis, will keep track of the time. And when it chimes, I'll let you know your time is up. So the public hearing is now open. And Tim is now going to present the background information of the proposal, written comments submitted, and any additional information uh, requested by the board. Commissioner, if I may. Yes, please. Um, maybe uh, for the uh, for the time being, can you call the first four uh, citizens? They have the time while uh, Tim provides. The oh, that's time. a good idea. So the first, I'm going to call the first five participants, and you'll have time to come up uh, while this is being presented. Or we'll wait. First one is John Pettit, and then it looks like Lake Stinsey, and then Brian Wilmofsky and Pat McFadden. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Those are the first. Oh, no, one more. Todd Tip. Todd Tip. So if you heard your name, uh, Lake, Brian, Pat, and Todd, please come on upstairs.
working so far. One, two, three, four, five. Boom. Woohoo, good. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank well, you for your patience again. I may ask you after you provide testimony to vacate the room so we can bring the other group back up again. Thank you. To keep it flowing. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. So, Tim, go ahead, sir. You got the floor. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioners. Tim Wilson, Water Resources Manager, Public Works. Uh, the Black Lake Special District Governing Board is requesting the Board of County Commissioners authorize the issuance of a $1.4 million bond with a 20-year term that would be serviced by a proposed special assessment generating $103,000 annually. Public Works and the Prosecuting Attorney have re reviewed the proposed special assessment rate structure pursuant to the requirements of RCW 8538-160. To fund the bond, excuse me, the Black Lake Special District is requesting the Board of County Commissioners approve special assessments on 179 lakefront properties that have been determined by the Black Lake Special District to receive benefit from the improvements. The cost of these properties per the proposed special assessment range from a low of $32 annually to a high of $17,736 annually. The median cost of affected properties would be $575.42 annually. A public process, including a public hearing to be held by the Board of County Commissioners to consider a proposed special assessment generating $103,000 annually, following both advertisement of the hearing and direct mail notification to all affected ratepayers, is required by RCW 8538-160 prior to authorization of the issuance. The consideration of a $1.4 million bond would be considered in a later action at a later date. The Board of County Commissioners was briefed on the petition on June 24th and requested that an AIS to set a public hearing be submitted. In addition to traditional advertising of public notices, individual letters that included notices of the public hearing were mailed to the affected owners, indicating the amount of special assessment ascribed to the particular lot. RCW is specific about these mail notices and requires that we show both the rate to the affected parcel for each $1,000 that the special assessment would collect, as well as the total special assessment value for the property. The special assessment is based upon a percentage of the current special use district rates and charges for the parcel and is not based upon property valuation. Staff has been collecting comments regarding the proposal, and as of 3 p.m., uh, we have zero comments in support of the special assessment, 12 comments against the assessment, and 24 comments voicing opposition to herbicide usage in Black Lake. Earlier this afternoon, uh, PDFs of the comments that we had received at that time were forwarded to the clerk of the board, and we will continue to, to track and consolidate comments as they come in. All right. Uh, any questions of, uh, of, of Tim? No, not at this point. I don't. I'm, I mean, I'm okay, okay. with what you're from. And Tim, again, this, this is not, this public hearing is not about herbicides. It's about the special assessment bond. That is correct. The, the, um, the intention of the special use district as it was communicated to uh, the county is for an alum treatment for uh, algae control and not for uh, any increased herbicide usage. Okay. Then we're going to, did you have something? Yeah, uh, for Tim. Um, Tim, can you walk us through the formulation as to how the rates uh, were established uh, related to the $1,000 valuation? I think it seems to be a little bit of uh, uh, questions related to that process. Yeah, I will, I will certainly try. Uh, the RCW for this is very specific in that um, we, we notify the property owners not just what the total impact to their parcel would be for this special assessment, but also that we reflect the the uh, assessment per thousand dollars of 
uh, special assessment that would be collected. So as an example, uh, if we were to take the $103,000 um, $103, special assessment and just for simplification, uh, look at it as $100,000. And if we were to look at a parcel that had a proposed assessment of $100, we would notify the, the, the parcel owner that per $1,000 collected, their rate would be $1. So for each $1,000 that the special assessment generated, their uh, new special assessment would be $1, if that makes sense. Uh, to, so I had, I had a related question. Uh, you said the median affected property, $575. Is that... Is that the increase over the current or that's the total for the for a median? Because then because on another piece of paper we have it says sixty-seven dollars a year increase. So I'm I'm guessing that's the increase. Five seventy-five would be the new total for a median parcel. So I can only speak to the special assessment, uh, which the average <clears throat> the average uh, uh, cost of the special assessment to the 179 parcels would be the $575. Uh, it's important to, to note that the special district already uh, collects rates and charges, normal rates and charges for their normal operations uh, out in Black Lake. And I believe that their intent is to um, manipulate those rates and charges downward uh, uh, kind of simultaneously with what's going on. But the board, the county's action, the board's action is to consider just the special assessment. So to answer your question, it is in addition to some uh, standing rates and charges that are already being collected. All right, it's all. So wait, are you done? Did you get? I'm gonna defer. You got your answer though or not yet? I'm gonna. Okay. You do think. Thank you. I know we're trying to do the right thing here as a as board, recognizing the concerns of the folks from Black Lake, both that are in favor of moving forward with this process to solve a problem, and those that might be against it. I think that's what we're here all about. We're asking a staff person to give us an in-depth explanation of a rather confusing issue because I'm not clear on it and I think the information sent out maybe by the elected board of directors from Black Lake, they talked about $67 a year is the average. And, and uh, I wonder, is there any reason that that's an elected body? I know we're the ones that are making the decision, but is there any reason that we couldn't have a representative from that elected body that represents the citizens out at Black Lake on this issue explain in the terms they've been talking with for quite a period of time now. I'm, I'm aware something's been going on here percolating for several years. And I just want the right information to be disseminated, not only to us, but to all the citizens that are gonna be affected. And, so are we locked into just listening to our county manager or staff or who are we locked into? I know we're gonna have testimony from citizens, but we're being asked to do something by another board of elected officials. Why is it that they could not have one of their representatives that feel comfortable step up to the podium, not give them the three minute drill but treat them as other elected officials in their particular representation and hear from them what is being proposed so everybody can hear what's going on and <clears throat> walk away with the same information. Is that, I, 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 know, I don't know the rules that well, I haven't been here that long. Uh, we don't, I, don't, I don't know if one of those elected bodies have signed up or if they're Zooming or conference. Well, I'm just, I, have, I have no idea. I, they I, have the same, they have the same, 
uh, opportunity as everybody. And I'm not discounting that, what you're saying, but I, we can't make them come. No, we but can't. They know but, we're doing this. They, we could ask them volunteer. Uh, I just think this is a very important topic. And if we try to follow all the rules to the letter about the bureaucratic process, I'm afraid we're going to try to make a decision here with confusing information. Who wants to go first? If you want to go ahead, Commissioner. I agree with you because at least two thirds, if not more, of the communications I've gotten are about a different issue that's even what is before the board. So I know I don't know how many people are downstairs, but I would hate to see this is so cumbersome. I would hate to see 50 people down there waiting to talk about something that's not before us. And I would like people's comments to be about the thing that we have to decide. And if if I, I see one of the board members sitting right in front of me, so that's why I'm very open to this mm -hmm. concept, because obviously we've had a presentation from that group. And if they can do a better job of explaining what's before the board, I'm all I, I'm completely open to that process. Um, to answer your question, Commissioner Edwards, no, you're not bound uh, to the three minutes. And uh, you certainly have the purview to ask the president of the board, I think he's uh, here, to give you their perspective uh, as to what the issue is. Uh, certainly, it, it is up to your purview. Uh, you're not bound by three minutes. Uh, you, that's the rules of engagement for any public hearing, but certainly you have the latitude to expand that, shorten, or stop it. So it's really you have all I guess that I'd defer to, to the chair of the Board of County Commissioners to decide how we do Yeah, and, and we do that. We have uh, setting the, the ground rules, the parameters, is to get accommodate everybody. Uh, but we don't, we don't have 50 people. I think we got about 15. Okay. Maybe we can do that. Uh, but so we're going to start with, uh, I think, the in-person people. Then we'll go to the Zoom people. And then we'll go to the phone people. Is that right with you? Does that make sense? Oh, it's whatever you like okay. to do. I, I, I guess think we did it differently last time. Now we do I, that this time. I, excuse me. I, I guess I, I say I'm going to defer to the chair, but this is a democratic process. And I guess I don't know. I'd just I'd make a motion maybe that we hear from the president of the group or the chair of the lake bo uh, lake group I'd itself. Like to. Uh, I, I mean, mean not as part of his three minute thing, but just give him time to explain what's happening. I make a motion to supplement Tim's introductory presentation with some information from Mr. Wilmowski. I'll second that before we ha take public comment. That's fine with me. I think it's a great that okay? it's a great uh, way to start a base. And then we'll move into the other public testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good. Did you have any more, Tim, before we uh, get to Mr. Wamowski? No, not at this time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. So when you come up, please state your name and your address for the record. Yes, my name is Lake Stincy. Uh -huh. And I live at 7514 Cattail Lane Southwest in Olympia. And uh, I, uh, I, I share with you the confusion over the legal notice that was sent out for this hearing. Can you, can you pull the microphone up a little bit for you? Just for yes. the update. There you go. Thank you. I, I, I concur with the confusion that the legal hearing notice caused as on our part, we sent out another hearing notice uh, explaining, we think better, what the impact would be on a typical homeowner on the lake. And we stated very clearly, we, we think, that the typical homeowner today, I think, pays around $420 a year to the special district, and that this was going to go up 16% as a result if this bond were approved. Um, so we actually, that's where the $67 that was mentioned earlier, and that's on the average homeowner. Now there are some parcels on the lake that pay a great deal more. Kennedale, the Fish and Wildlife Ramp, um, so, some of the tra trailer parks that are on the lake, but they will each go up 16%. And, and uh, of course, much of, uh, and maybe I'll back up a little bit too and talk about the financing and the budget that we have. We currently collect around $160,000 a year. And of course, with this 
if this bond is approved, 103,000 of that is basically going to be locked away. It's going to be dedicated uh, and probably may, the treasurer will make payments on our behalf to, to on this bond. We're left then with about 62,000 to operate and we didn't think we could operate with that small amount. So we uh, agreed as a board to increase it by 23,000 or about 16%. And so that's how the computations and that will bring us up with a, an operating budget that we're left with of about 83,000 a year to do uh, uh, herbicide control, uh, plant control, et cetera, and to continue uh, our studies of the lake. We, we continue to study uh, looking for nutrient sources of the lake, because they're the cause of all these problems, is basically nutrients from the watershed. And uh, we're, we're quite proud of the amount of studying that we have done on this lake. So any other questions on that? Does that help? Or? Any questions? It helps. I, it's, uh, okay. It helps. I guess I'll, I'll say a little. And the plant control and herbicide issue, which we got a lot of communications about, that's not something that the Board of County Commissioners gets involved in, is that correct? That, that, that's, that's correct. We're, we're uh, right, our purpose here is to hopefully get approval from you folks for issuing a bond. Of course, the purpose of the bonds is this alum treatment, which is not a herbicide. Um, it's something that will bind with the phosphorus in the lake and, and in some of the sediment and reduce greatly the blue-green algae issues. And that's a safe treatment as far as you understand. Yes, sir. And we, we've done it. We did a, we did a small uh, application back in 2016. The reason it was small is because we didn't have any, enough money. But then we had science that said, oh, you don't need to put on that much. We've since learned, learned better. Alum has also been applied at Long Lake, which was maybe 15 years ago. And uh, in Green Lake in Seattle, and it's even applied to some of the lakes in California that are used for drinking water. Uh, the alum treatment clarifies the water. Uh, it's also, alum is also used in many of the water treatment plants for drinking water. So it's a, it's, it's a, a, a process that Fish and Wildlife doesn't require us to, to use it during certain windows of the year. We can use it any time of the year. We have to follow Department of Ecology's uh, re uh, notice requirements and reporting. Anything else? Yes. I guess that, that was probably a follow-up question uh, for you is uh, any type of treatment that you uh, do on Black Lake has to follow the state law? Yes, sir. And that's where you bound, you are bound to follow state law? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And, you know, something that came up when this is more for Tim, I guess, but as I was learning about this too, a lake management district, which you are not, would be subject to the county rules on use of herbicides, but as a special use district, you are not subject to that county uh, regulation. You have to follow state guidelines um, and the county's kind of out of it, just by the nature of, and I think what confuses people is that some lakes are not in any district, like Summit Lake, and then there's lake management districts, and then there's special use districts. So there's three governing schemes and each one comes with a different level of county involvement and the average citizen has no idea what, lake to lake what that governing system is. And I'm looking at you, Lake, Tim, did I get that right? Kind of, I don't want to misstate anything. Is that a fair uh, summary? Yeah, that is, that is exactly right. If you, if you are, if you formed under an, a different RCW as a lake management district, then, then per, um, for our policies, you are you are bound um, as a county governed uh, body of water to abide by our uh, pesticide policy, whereas a special use district is not. Yes, we're we're bound by the Department of Ecology. And, Got it. But is that what you, what you wanted to testify to? Uh, no, sir. I had some other comments, but I. I I'll look good that you're there. Okay. Good, uh, if you can finish up, sir. Um, and I think this has already been made made clear. Uh, this grant, or this bond, will have nothing to do with pesticides. Okay. Um, the, uh, 
was mentioning that the Black Lake has been heavily studied. We've looked and looked for nutrient sources, which is what causes the blue, blue green algaes and the, and, the, and the plant growth, et cetera. We're pretty proud of how far we've gone. Uh, we've recently, uh, we're completing our phase two study of 25 creeks in the lake. We found two that uh, we're gonna get environmental health involved with helping us with, because we've had some high fecal coliform with some DNA markers for human. So we're gonna chase that. We, uh, we've also done something quite uh, unique. Uh, we've, we hired a scientific company to troll the entire shoreline of the lake, looking for optical brighteners. Optical brighteners is something that's in our laundry detergent that goes into your septic tank. And if your tank fails or has problems and it leaches into the lake, it, it can be an easy marker that, hey, we've got a septic issue. So we're waiting to see the results on that, but it was very, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to work both ends. We're not just trying to do the atomic bomb approach on the lake, but also trying to look for nutrient sources and pollution sources. We've also had two different uh, companies uh, do sediment core sampling and phosphorus sampling in the lake so that when we get to the point of doing this treatment that, we, that we've got the right measures in place to make it successful. So I, I think that's all I, all I had. So thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Lake, thank you very much, sir. And on the Lake District, you are uh, the special use district. You're the, the chair of finance? Yes, sir. Chair, thank you very much. Uh, now I'm going to get back in. Well, Brian, you want to come up? Yeah. Stand by, John. <laughs> Brian Womoski. Uh, I live at 5447 Clipston Lane, Southwest, Olympia, 98512. Great. Right. So... I got involved. I've been. I've been. Okay. Oh, What's your title on the use district? Uh, I am uh, one of the commissioners. Commissioners. Okay. Right. So you don't have a time limit here. Okay. Great. Go ahead. So you know, I got involved with this because I've been involved in the lake for 50 years and lived there for 25. And uh, the toxic blue green algae just kept building, and that's why Save Black Lake was formed. And then finally, Save Black Lake moved us to the special district where we had our hearings and we became a body. And over that time period, we've made huge gains in herbicides, getting rid of, we had like a nausea type of milfoil thing, just like Long Lake had. We're, we're, we're so similar to Long Lake's problem. They're just 20 years ahead of us. And they've organized and they've grouped. And, and a, a, a really good point to make is even though we're bound by ecology and they're bound by the county, we're still, the county is accepting the same treatment that we're using, which is alum. So we're not going, we're not using something that the county is not okay with. So that's an important point. Um, so anyway, we, we did a treatment four years ago. We had some nice success, and uh, but they came to us and said, well, Green Lake is using f four times what you're using. Long Lake's using four times what you're using. So we're just tracking in the steps of success. So how are we going to pay for all this? We tried granting for a year and got nowhere whatsoever. Um, and so ultimately, the only way we can finance a real generational solution, and this is the, the scientists, the PhDs that we hire, tell us that this is gonna last 10 to 20 years, is to do a generational fix like Long Lake did, where you get 10, 15, 20 years out of these treatments, and like Green Lake did in Seattle. And so we had to do four times the amount, and that's where the number comes from. And the only way we can possibly finance this is over time with a bond, and that's why we're here today. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower the rates and charges that people are normally paying to offset 80% of this $103,000. So we only need this $23,000. You spread it out over everybody here on the lake, the average person's paying $5.60 a month. For me, is just a no-brainer because whenever I jump in that lake, I get a sinus infection or an itch. My dog comes in and scratches all the floor. And worldwide, uh, toxic blue-green algae kills people all the time. So it's a, it, 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 nobody likes toxic blue-green algae. It's good for nothing. It just pollutes the lake. It, it, it affects and hurts people. And we've come up with a budget here to very minimally impact our, our lake residents because we care about them. And we've been grinding these meetings out for six years and we encourage them to come and give us the input. But I think there was a really confusing number that came out of the, the, the notice they got from the county. And so people didn't know how much I'm gonna pay and it's gonna be thousands and all that. It's not gonna be, it's gonna be a small amount and a huge, huge benefit to the lake. 
So I think that's important. And then some email went around this week saying we were going to use Roundup to clean the lake. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. crazy. So we're, like you said, we're, we're not even here about that. We're here about Allen, which is using water sources. And, and, and as I mentioned, all these other lakes, super successful. So to me, after all these years of working and getting to this point, the small amount that we are going to have to increase for this, on average, there will be some that pay more. We, we've already stated that. But it's going to do a huge amount for that lake and the whole of citizens of Thurston County because yesterday there was 100 people out there. And most lake residents just hang back on busy days. It's everybody in the county that we're benefiting. So, um, so that's what I wanted to say today. And uh, I appreciate you guys considering this. And hopefully we can move forward. Thank you. Before you leave, though, sure. I want to hear, and I want the public to hear, yeah. that you're doing the alum eventually, but you're not using Roundup, asbestos, Agent Orange. Absolutely Agent Orange. not. Not, <laughs> not. Absolutely not. Yeah, no, that's not the issue. I just want to hear you say <laughs> Yes, that. absolutely. You got All right. it. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Brian. Okay. I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Uh, John Pettit. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is John Pettit, 9725 Rich Road. I have people that live on the lake that have requested I also be here. Uh, numbers are important. And right now, the numbers are very muddy between Tim Wilson and how the county digested the numbers and, and how it's being presented here by the district. You can't move forward with something with numbers that uh, don't really relate because clearly the resolution doesn't make it clear that they're intending actually reducing the fees in order to do it. Now, I'll touch base on something I talked about with Long Lake. The property owner shouldn't be paying for this alum treatment. The stormwater fund should be paying for the alum treatment because it serves the entire community. It serves the entire public. It's inappropriate to be asking property owners to be paying for cleaning up the state waters, the recreation point for the county. You have a park, you have two parks on that lake. And yet the property owners are having to reach into their pocket hundreds of dollars. And there's a lot of confusion regarding the numbers here. And I'm gonna tell you, uh, you can't go from saying your, your number is only going to be $67 and then you have the county that says the additional amount you're going to charge here is $256 for one of my clients per year and he's already paying $385 per year. So he's going $385 plus $256. That's his new payment. That's not what I'm hearing. So before you take any action towards talking about issuing a bond, or I should say allowing a bond to be issued, you need to stop, you need to get a clear <clears throat> statement about the whole program. The other part is, of course, you've been giving some reduced stormwater fees to the Lake District or Special District as such, but Maybe if you didn't give them the reduce, they pay the same as everybody for stormwater, the county would go ahead and take on the responsibility it should to pay for these things. It's not fair or reasonable. So I'm gonna suggest one more thing. Because it's so cloudy, uh, similar to an LID, similar to other situations, if you're gonna ask a very limited group of people to actually pay a certain amount of dollars. You do it like an LID and you put it out for vote by the people that are gonna pay for it. And the majority of that group of people by dollar rating of the ones that are paying, they make a decision. You can put it out for an election and put this in the hands of the people that you're asking to pay 5,000, 10,000 more dollars. Thank you very much. Uh, Pat? Uh, is it McFadden? You can hear me through this mask. Yes. Um, Pat McFadden, uh, 4224 52nd Avenue Southwest, Olympia 98512. And I've been a resident of Black Lake for nearly 50 years now. 
And I wanna say these people have done a really nice job of cleaning up the lake. And my only concern with this whole bond issue is in the way that they have decided to assess the uh, property owners on the waterfront as opposed to the entire taxing district. It seems like we're setting a weird precedent there. Because when we formed this district, we formed it so that everybody that benefited from the lake conceivably could be included into the spe special taxing district for Black Lake District. But now they've decided that only th this additional bond is only gonna be paid by the waterfront owners. And it seems like you might as well say, well, the people in the north end of the lake are gonna pay and the people on the south end aren't because you gotta have a reason for why you're doing this. So I, th I think if anything happens, it should be shared equally amongst the entire taxing district and not just the waterfront owners, which I am one, of course. And that's my only point. Thank you, Mr. McGee. Thank you. Uh, Todd. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Todd Tipp. I live at 7043 Fairview Road, Southwest. Um, we purchased our home in 13 against my better judgment. My wife and my two boys overrode me, as you know, by my address I just gave you. I wanted to buy a house on the bay. And, and my reason was I've, I've grown up on lakes and Black Lake didn't look appealing to me. It, it looked really bad as far as the quality of the water. And that's the only reason I didn't want to be there. I, we own Olympia Collision in town. It's close to work. A hundred reasons why we should be there. 13 was rough. 14 was rough. Our, my family had, I have healthy children, healthy two boys. We had, in myself, we had ear infections. We had all kinds of stuff going on. And my doctor pinned it to Black Lake. This is, Todd, you've been healthy. Your family's been healthy. This, you're having all these issues now since you've moved to the lake. So I agreed with that. 15, and my wife assured me when, when they overrode me about buying the home on Black Lake, there was grumblings of a treatment that, that we were gonna do something for the lake, at the community, that, that everyone was gonna take care of the lake. 15 was great. I remember I walked out to my dock when they, we lived next to the boat ramp and I saw they had all moved out. A Couple days later I walk out, I look down, it's crystal clear. We had no issues that summer. None of us were at the doctor. It was amazing. 16 was good. And then it slowly reversed and went back to where it was. It's like maybe the treatment was too light up to that point, it was good. So now we just were dealing with the same issues, the quality of the water. Black Lake is amazing. Last night I was out on the lake. There, like Dr. Brian Wolvoski said, there was over a hundred boats out there. I mean, there's, the boat ramp was packed. They were almost parking in my yard, which I don't care. Everyone was using the lake. I just wanna get the lake back to where it was in 15 because it was amazing. I had no health issues. My children had no health issues. It was good for everybody. So that's why I'm here today. I just wanted to reinforce, I'm just hopeful that we can get this grant, put this together, protect that lake and get it beautiful like it should be for everybody to use. I don't mind paying the additional taxes. I think majority of the people that live on the lake feel the same way that I do. They all want the lake to be quality. So thank you for hearing me. That's why I'm here today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. So the next, um, we call the next four, uh, five rather, five, and the first one is John, and your last name starts with an H, and the digits of your address are 7020. If you would come up, and Vicki uh, Vicky DeSord, or DeSord, and Mark Smith, Vicki Smith, and Jeff Fonchett, or Fouch Foucher, I bet it's Foucher, Jeff Foucher. If you make your way up to uh, the boardroom, that'd be appreciated, thank you. I can guess right. You must be Vicky, but I don't know which one. Vicky, yes. Okay, we'll wait for everybody. the others come in. Be sure you sanitize your hands because you're the one of the gentlemen before wasn't using a mask and he was touching and speaking into the microphone. I got it. Thank you. But okay.
step stools. <laughs> Push it all the way down, it'll reach it. Go ahead. Anyway. It'll go down even further if you wanted to. You know. <clears throat> well, first is John, but you're already up here. My name is Vicki DeSorti, and I live okay. at 6940 Lakeside Street. Oh, okay. One, two, three, four. Are we waiting for one other person to come up? Yeah. Uh, that's John who? He's not going to. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. So go ahead, Vicki. I'm sorry. Can I start over? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> thank you. Okay. I'm just as confused as, uh. as most everybody else, but my name is Vicki DeSorti, and I live at 6940 Lakeside Street Southwest, and the property has been in my family for 67 years, and I grew up there, and the lake used to be clean, and and yes, we've had our problems, but a lot of it is not, it's by the outside sources that come in. The mail for out, we, we're gonna have to manage it. I agree. And I don't mind paying to get that taken care of. But I'm concerned about exactly where the money goes, because we've had the special district now for a while, and the lake has gotten better, trust me. But we're gonna keep having outside sources that bring in the contamination. And I think we need to manage more the outside sources. And we all love the lake and live there. And I realize that things change. And I'd like to go back to where it was. And I don't, the taxation doesn't bother me. It's not that much money, really, uh, to keep my lake clean and free. And yes, it is toxic. Uh, when my dogs used to go in, they'd get your infections. Uh, my, my children, my grandkids, they bathe every time they go in the lake. It's not like it used to be. And yes, we do need to clean the lake up, but it's not just the people on the lake, it's the outside sources. And I don't know how we're gonna manage that. Uh, and I know there's concerns about a lot of people in paying the extra taxation. And I don't mind, but I just don't want it to increase. And I wanna know where my money's going. I mean, we've had the Black Lake District for a while, and yes, it's gotten better but I want to see a big improvement. I mean, I've, I've been there for years and it has gotten better, but it used to be so perfect when I was a child, but yeah, hey, that was a long time ago. Yes. <laughs> anyway, and I know, I think we're going in the right direction, but I really need more of a breakdown of where the money's gonna go and how it's, you know, gonna impact the people on the lake. I just, you know, once you get involved in giving your money, um, it's fine. I just need a breakdown. And it was very confusing to all of us on the lake. The letter that went out, it was like we were going to be taxed by the government, not where was the money going. We weren't quite sure. But now listen to this. It's an additional, not an additional tax to already paying. It's just going to increase, if that's my understanding. And that's what I think the people on the lake need to know. We're not going to get taxed by somebody else. It's just going to increase or maybe decrease what we already pay. And I think that's the big concern of the people on the lake. We all want the lake clean. We want our kids and our grandkids. We want to be able to swim there and have a nice clean lake. We want people to boat there. Because the lake is a beautiful place. It's, it's gorgeous. Is my time out? Yes, ma'am. Anyway, but no. And I, like I said, it's I just want the lake to be clean. I want my kids to enjoy it, my grandkids. But I want to make sure my money is going to take care of that, where it's going. And I think that's what we all want. Thank you. And thank you for your time. Thank you very much and for your patience. Mark Smith. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. It, it, you know. Your, your name and address, please. Oh, Mark Smith, 19. Uh, 410 Northeast 113th Street, Redmond, Washington, the owner of, uh, uh, managing member of uh, Lakeside Mobile Home Park. Okay, thank you. A as you refer to your deal, trailer park. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're like, you got six, eight people on a board, and, you know, these are small dollars, right? Seems like it. Um, for us, it's $5,662. Over the term of the loan, it's 113000 So, you know, the five or six bucks you're talking about, it's a little more to us. And if you're to put it in a percent increase, 
So I'd have to raise the rent by 1.3%, not much. Social Security goes up by 1.6, not much. You know, it kind of matches. Um, you know, this is money to us. Uh, it's not to most of you. If I were, if I own the 1.6, you got six board members, 1.6 million dollars. I own a house on Black Lake. This is chump change. It's absolute chump change. But uh, when you consider that, what about uh, the 160 tenants I have? Uh, we read that you have overwhelming support. I don't know of anybody that supported it. Uh, the one comment I get is, is uh, one of our tenants says, uh, geez, isn't that public property? Isn't that public water? Why are we paying for it? And I guess that's the question. You know, why do you, you know, if you, you uh, county commissioners came and said, uh, uh, my park has to be a park forever, it can't be a, a commercial development. You know, I understand that, and, and, I'm, and I'm with that. They have kind of a quasi-ownership interest. But if you're going to support affordable housing, you got to do it. can't just say you are. Thank you, sir. Biggie Smith? All right. Um... I'm not a good public speaker, but I'm Vicki Smith, and um, the address is 4045 49th Avenue Southwest. That's Olympia, Lakeside Mobile Home Park. And, and my, my perspective on this, if I've been asked by the 75 owner, dwelling owners at Lakeside to speak for them, um, so that's what I'm going to try to do here. If you can't hear me, <laughs> raise your fine, hand. You're fine. You got it? Okay. You're fine. Um, so uh, Lakeside is affordable housing. It is a mobile home park. Um, it was built in the 60s, and it, as Mark just said, it's going to be a mobile home park forever, according to Thurston County and Washington state law. The The... The people, the 75 dwellings that, I, that were being assessed on, if you look at the Black Lake Special District assessment, each one of those, we've got an assessment for how much lakefront, we got all these various things. I know it's very confusing. I tried to read it. Um, but we get assessed per dwelling. We don't, we're the property owners, but we don't own the dwellings. That's the problem with the way that this has kind of come down is we have seniors, 60% are fixed income seniors and low income families, family units. They're the ones that own those dwellings. This assessment is hitting them, this affordable housing. As Mark said, you know, we're talking $113,000, right, times 75 people, right, divided by 75 people. It's a lot of money to them. Um, so what, what they've asked me to do is explain who they are, right? So they are uh, seniors and, and um, people who feel that they are good stewards of the lake. They don't use phosphorus in their fertilizers in their detergents. They're very conscientious about the water usage. Um, the dogs are on leash. They make sure they pick up immediately from them. They don't feed the ducks and the geese <laughs> because of the nitrates. I mean, we are talking about people who are very concerned about the lake and, and put in the work and the diligence. These people live there. This is affordable housing. Um, they, they own their mobiles. This is like a hybrid. It's not like normal prop, other property, right? The other property owners own both the ground and the dwellings. These people own the dwellings, and we own the ground. There is no way for you to give them the, the, the um, senior tax break that has been promised in this letter because... 
you're going to the property owner and not to the mobile home owner. Now, uh, Thurston County Tax Assessor, I think this all can be a remedy. They do an excellent job. They tax the dwelling separate from the land. So the dwelling and the improvements that are owned by these people, and then they can easily apply for the exemptions that they're completely entitled to. You know, these uh, people I can introduce you to, right? But uh, Ruth, she'd be here if she could during because of COVID. She can't be. But she's, she's you know, senior widow, lost her husband now two years ago. Her income was cut substantially when she lost him. So these are the people that we're fighting for, or those are the people that we're bringing the concerns for um, to this. And, and we, do, we do want Black Lake to be taken care of. There's no question. Um, but we would like to see that the people who use the lake pay the tax to take care of the lake. It is that use, or in some cases, abuse. And there, there's a lot of abuse on this lake. Hundreds of boats, you heard, almost parking on people's property. I mean, these people are using and using and using and taking and taking and taking, but can we do some form of use tax? <clears throat> can we, why, why is the boat launch free? Yeah, people, that's complicated. People too. wouldn't mind paying. My residents wouldn't mind paying an additional fee for boating tabs or for fishing licenses. It's just don't tax the affordable housing. They have no alternatives. They can't go anywhere else, and I don't want them to have to sell to somebody who can afford. Thank Nikki, you. Ms. Smith, and I have to tell you, uh, uh, you're an excellent spokesperson for your constituency. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Appreciate you it. Uh, Jeff? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Jeff Fancher. My address is 5441 Clipson Lane, Southwest, Olympia, 98512. I've lived on Black Lake now for about 25 years. And since that time, um, I think in the beginning it was, the lake wasn't so bad. But towards the uh, middle of my residency there with my family, it got really unbearable, like late summer, early spring, to the point where I remember I'm a fisherman and I like to go bass fishing off my dock. And it got so bad that I could throw a lure and it would land on the surface and not sink down. It was, it had so baked, like the, the sludge on the lake had baked so much. And then uh, the special district was formed, which I really appreciate all the work they've done. It's been really eye-opening because not only are they helping with the weeds, they're helping with uh, controlling the uh, waterfowl, which create a lot of uh, nutrients in the water. And um, they're also proposing this alum treatment, which they did earlier. And like you've heard before, it made a huge difference. It was amazing to see. I've lived on that lake and fished for a long time. I hadn't seen you know eight feet down ever but all the stuff that you could see in the lake at, after they treated it, um, it was amazing. And I'm really looking forward to this next treatment. So um, I'm in support of uh, this proposal and I wanna thank you guys for considering it. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry for butchering your name. Now the next uh, five on the list, uh, this is for downstairs in room 152. It looks like Randy Stelness, Ethan Wilmowski, Vernon Bonfield, Richard Gamfelder, and Terry LaRude, or LaRude. You make your way up, we're waiting for you. And then we'll get to the people on Zoom and the people on the conference call if you're still there. And again, thank you for your patience. I say it right? Randy Selness, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, go ahead, sir. Can I?
can I take this off when I'm speaking? So hot. So I'm Randy Selness. I live. Can you lift up makeup. Makeup. Oh sure. There you go. There you go. Better. Yeah, that's fine. Randy Selness. I live at uh, five three one two Black Lake Boulevard Southwest in Olympia. Um, I'm a waterfront owner. I'd like to say, I mean, follow up on a couple things other people said. You know, when it comes to paying for for use, I mean, all the lake owners they get you know get taxed by your amount of uh, property that you own, value of the house, and for the tax district, you get paid by or you you pay by um, how many water uh, feet of waterfront you own, and. Um, <clears throat> I think my assessed, I own like 200 feet. I think it's like $365 to get the lake nice and clean. And totally worth it when instead of getting shut down, you know, from too much blue-green algae and you know, having the lake shut down for a couple of weeks, we've had it done before. That's, I mean, why you live in a lake if you can't even use it? And uh, just another point, of, sorry, I ran up the stairs. That's all right. <clears throat> I'm not very good at speaking in public either. But. Um, a point for the use, like all the boats, I know that the county, the park, and like uh, Evergreen Shores, Columbus Park, Salmon Shores, the, the county park, the boat ramp, I know they pay something like 75 grand a year because that's for the use. They pay their share, and that's for all the people that, that, that put the boats in the water to put it through the boat ramp, you know, and so when the boat ramp is packed, I mean, that's because, I mean, they, that's how they pay their share. They really do all that use, and I have, I have boats and jet or boat and jet skis, and I use it too. And I, you know, and I pay. And if I my my three hundred and sixty four dollars is go up sixteen percent a year, I want a clean lake. I'm gonna I'm gonna live there for I've been there for about thirteen years, and I love living on a lake. Just it's a great place to be, and I, you know you got to have clean water. I could walk out the end of my dock and I can see the bottom. You know, five years ago, four years ago, I don't think I could, and when the algae's coming in. I have pictures where you can't even see the water from like 20 feet away from the beach. It's just completely covered. And I haven't seen that yet, you know, since I think the alum treatment worked last time and I think we needed more of it. Uh, you know, after, because I've, I've been going to the meetings when it started getting really bad and I'm, I'm totally for um, having another treatment and I hope you consider it. I think the lake deserves it to have it. And more people will come out and you get to use it, especially if it doesn't get shut down from so, thank you. Thanks, sir. Uh, Ethan? Ethan Wilmowski. I don't know if you took off with uh, Brian or not. Uh, but Ethan and uh, Vernon Bonfield and Richard Gaumfelder, I don't want to get it wrong, uh, and Carrie, Karen Wood. Come up, sir. Go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Vernon Bonfields. Um, I live at 6335 Black Lake Belmore Road. I've lived there for about 18 years. I also am one of the commissioners for the Black Lake Special District. Uh, I was also one of the founding members of the nonprofit formed uh, back about 10 years ago called Save Black Lake. And that organization was formed based on a community upswelling of kind of disgust for the lake situation and quality at that time. We had a tremendous weed problem. We also had a, an invasive species called uh, uh, Eurasian water milfoil that was found in our lake, which can spread rapidly and kind of take over a lake. So we did what we had to do to raise money and petitioned and fundraised, and uh, we were able to get close to $100,000 in Department of Ecology grants. And then fast forward, we're here now <clears throat> forming a, we'd formed a special district uh, based on our constituents' uh, desire to keep this going and not just use a one-time a grant from the Department of Ecology, but to recognize that we needed to do something um, long term. And so through that, I, I don't want to uh, speak really about the, the sludge in the lake and the disgust and pulling weeds out of boat motors and all the things that we had to do. You're, you've heard plenty of that. I think as an elected official, as much as if we are, uh, I want to just speak to you that <clears throat> over the 10 years of me doing this, I've encountered um, a large percentage of our population within our district, especially those that are lakefront through those fundraisers and things that we did and the community meetings and the Christmas parties. And, and I can tell you that um, my testimony to you is, is that the faces and the people that live on the lake, many of whom are not here today, uh, would always say the same thing, which is 
I can't wait for we, us to get rid of the weeds so we can focus on this blue-green algae problem because that was seemed to be a really big concern for a lot of folks. The weeds were certainly an issue, but we knew that we could address it, and then they said the next thing, promise us that we're gonna deal with the blue-green algae. So we had an overwhelming support for moving forward with this, which is why the county commissioners uh, took it very seriously, and as you heard from our president, uh, in, uh, incorporated uh, test, uh, information from uh, several organizations and uh, doctors and uh, biologists to help us direct us because we didn't know. So we relied on the experts to tell us uh, this is how we can address this problem. So uh, of course I'm for the uh, movement forward with the bond and I uh, appreciate your time. Thanks. Hey, can I have... Sir, I'm not sure which one you are. <laughs> so like you get up here. Hello, I'm Richard Grunenfelder, 4737 56th Avenue Southwest. And I, like everybody else, you know, we'd like to see the lake cleaned up, but I don't think that uh, the property owners have to take care of all the expense. One of the things that I'm concerned about is right now, <clears throat> the lake is up about 16 inches and we have a little procedure on the other end Percival Creek or whatever that's supposed to be cleaned out and stuff, and it isn't. Uh, it's already been in place to do this, but no one's doing a job. So that lake being up that much will help the turn of that lake, and that should uh, help a lot as well as the chemicals and everything else. But um, anyway, I just, uh, I don't know what we can do to make that happen because there's already rules and set up for this. So anyway, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grunfelder. I appreciate that. Appreciate you coming. Uh, last call for uh, Terry LaRue or Terry LaRed. And these are Will Moski if they're here. So when they come up, if they make it here, that's fine. If not, then let's go on to the uh, people on Zoom that may want to testify. Do we have anybody? Let me know. Yes, I'm trying to coordinate here. Um, here we go. Here comes. Oh, we've got somebody. Oh, yay. Yeah. Carrie's here. Carrie, come on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your patience. <sighs> Sorry. So, right. um, I'm Carrie LaRude at 5700 Black Lake Boulevard. I manage Columbus Park, and I'm also the secretary for our Safe Black Lake Board. <sighs> Sorry, take a breath. Yeah, all right, take your time. <sighs> so my concern is twofold. <laughs> I also have an affordable housing community that I need to protect my residents. And we are also <sighs> in COVID right now, which is put us in, <sighs> sorry, I ran up the stairs. Mm -hmm. You're fine. Uh, how many residents, how many uh, places? We have about 85 households there. 85 It's a households. combination of houses and RV park. Yeah. We're also a day use facility, so we have a boat launch. And we do assess a fee that comes from the uh, special use district for that. So we are um, <laughs> concerned about another increase, especially during eviction moratoriums and things like that, where we can't pass a fee on to the customers or onto our residents, but also they can't afford it. <laughs> so it's kind of a combination. Um, currently, and I brought my tax statement for these two districts, and I have kind of a, a similar concern to Lakeside in that what we pay is close to $8,000 currently for cleanup of the lake, and we've been doing that. Um, kind of came out of nowhere for us when it first started. It has made a difference. I would like to see some other treatments tried at some point. One of the things that the Save Black Lake Board has been working on is we need clean out to happen in the lake. Um, but these, like the last gentleman talked about, the ditch has never been cleaned. Someone's supposed to be cleaning that, that drops the lake level. But the other end also at Black River, and we have one of our board members working on this, is um, supposed to be clear also. And we have since let the beavers take that over. And so it is not clear. And the Black River does not flow through any longer, which would alleviate some of the issues that we also have on the lake. So those are things that the Save Black Lake Board is still working on. Um, 
And I know that uh, Jason Mosbar is our president. He's on the phone, so he'll probably talk later more about that. <sighs> so uh, the geese we have <laughs> over the last two years started to do a goose hunt with all restrictions in place, protecting our residents and all of those things. And so we are you know, doing things at Columbus Park to try to mitigate some of the excess things that happen. We're also diligent about taking care of our creek that runs into the lake. Um, we have a lot of restrictions on what campers can do when they're with us, which doesn't allow them to play in the creek, actually. So there's a lot of things, and there's no septics down there along the creek and that sort of a thing. Um, Go ahead, finish. You're fine. Keep going. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> I said I, I wear a lot of hats, um, and uh, I appreciate very much what the special use district has done. And as a Black Lake board member, I, I support what the special use district is doing. Um, I just also wear the other hat of protecting an affordable housing community. And so I would really like to see that the fees are very clear. And like Lakeside, our uh, parcel numbers are split between households and land. And so for some of those, they don't transmit across to be able to give the house owner the ability to pay a portion of the tax. And we cannot increase taxes or, or rent to our customers right now because we're in a moratorium. Mm -hmm. um, it just seems like maybe now is a time to pause some of the extra costs. And maybe we just need to know a little bit more clearly what those extra costs are before we proceed with them. Um, it does feel a little unfairly set on some of the business owners that are affordable housing communities on the lake to host a bulk of what we're doing mm -hmm. to clean up the lake. So I also feel that it needs to go upstream because there are people that could be a part of this taxing community that are not assessed, that are not directly on the lake, that could be contributing financially to helping us take care of this lake. Thank you. Thank you very much. I didn't get the answer to uh, Commissioner Edwards' question. How many parcels do you have? We have approximately, we have two parcels. Yeah, two parcels. But each of the individual houses has a separate parcel that's not included in the taxation process. 85, right? We have about 85, 85. households, okay, thank you. And, and it just kind of depends on who's in uh, them and that sort of a thing. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Uh, now we're going to go to um, the zoo. Uh, the um, the only uh, I know that um, Polar Works submitted a, a letter uh, to you commissioners and maybe um, no Polar Works. Oh, I I sent that early on an email to you. Okay, and um, so Jennifer may like to just highlight the gist of the letter uh, as part of the public testimony. Do you want to do that, uh, or you want to go to the phone? Uh, whatever is your pleasure. Let's go to the phone first. Get people waiting to cook dinner or something. <laughs> yep. Please. For those who, citizens who have joined us via uh, conference call, um, let me know if you'd like to testify. If you do, please unmute your phone, introduce yourself and the address, and uh, we will give you three minutes. Yes, Gary and Suzanne Klein. Gary and Suzanne Klein would like to speak. Okay. Okay, please go ahead. 4711 Black Lake Boulevard, Olympia, Washington, 98512. And my husband has lived here for 44 years, and here he is. He's going to talk first. Yes, uh, I'm a biologist by training. We live on the west side of the lake. We have a narrow strip of land. We don't own a boat. Our house is actually across the road, set well back from the lake. To us, this has been about the most confusing public process we've ever encountered. We just cannot figure out what's involved here. When you look at the whole project that's being talked about, $1.4 million, uh, we can't put our blinders on and pretend that we're only talking about the algae situation. We're talking about the whole project. And I have in my hand here a 
a notice that was sent out by the Black Lake Special District that is dated July 10th, 2020. And it says, products planned for use, active ingredient, diquat, dibromide, aquathol, glyphosate. Glyphosate is the main ingredient in Roundup. Roundup is the most ubiquitous herbicide used all around the world, and it is destroying our agricultural lands, which is to say we're going to have a hard time growing food before long. Now, this notice here, which we didn't notice at first, says that uh, these products are going to be sprayed on the lake starting yesterday, going through August 24th, and then later on maybe August 17th to October 20th. Third. So let's not pretend here that we're not poisoning the lake. Glyphosate is a very uh, toxic uh, herbicide, and it uh, is made by Monsanto, now owned by uh, Bayer, and they have 52,000 lawsuits against them for a number of things, including cancer. So they have paid out. Vicky is now joining the conference. They have paid out billions of dollars in fines. Countries in Europe largely have banned this product and anything that's grown on the lands that use this product, this glyphosate. So somebody here needs to make a total evaluation of this project, put out an environmental impact assessment or statement where all the alternatives are examined, including uh, mechanical harvesting of this stuff, maybe use it to make uh, a decent compost. Uh, so this needs to be fully evaluated. We need to know what the actual impacts are going to be or are, and it needs to be circulated to the public so that the findings and the, and the best alternative uh, can be arrived at and told to the people who live not only around the lake but throughout the county. Someone here needs to be responsible for this really dangerous chemical plus the diquat, and uh, we can't just pretend, oh, this doesn't apply to us. We're not talking about this today. Mm -hmm. We are talking about it. That's what's going on now. It's what they propose to do. $1.4 million for what? To put alum in the lake? Okay, if that works, if that's safe, but is it going to cost $1.4 million? We're being assessed, if it says $402 for our little parcel, and then somewhere else it says we're being assessed $67. Sir, sir. I don't know which it is. Sir. If it's both of them. Sir, you may want to wrap up. Uh, your three minutes are up. All right. Okay, I'm done. Oh, it's time to. Is uh, Suzanne going to speak? Suzanne Klein, can I just have a minute? Sure. No, you have three minutes. Oh, well, uh, he said he covered it pretty much. Uh, but um, in any case, why a 20 year commitment rather than year to year approval? That needs to be looked at. There's so many things that need to be looked at. And the boats are abusing the lake, which causes a lot of pollution as well. It's not the property owner's job to just pay for this. And using the most dangerous chemicals that have been proven to cause cancer is just too dangerous to even risk. And I don't, I'm not sure what they've been spraying in the past. We don't know. And another issue is we don't know any of the names of the Black Lake Special District Board. They never put their names on any of their correspondence, and usually we don't get a date on any of their correspondence. And um, this entire thing has to be evaluated not just for taxes, but for the dangerous chemicals that uh, are being used on the lake. And um, one of the board members earlier said that, you know, they're not using Roundup. Well, their list of chemicals on the correspondence we receive is Roundup. And they might not even know that, but it is. So they need to do some research as well. And this just can't continue because it's a sham, 
And a lot of this is being covered up, and it's not presented well. Um, different prices uh, tax-wise are being quoted, and we have all this documentation, plus we only got a seven-day notice for this hearing. And how do you do anything in seven days? We've done a lot because we've got the word out as best we could and sent many emails, and um, this needs to be evaluated. That's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Klein. Thank you. Is there anybody else uh, via conference call who would like to testify? Yes. yes. Uh, I'm sorry to Please state your name, your address, and you have three minutes. Is it, is it There's two or three people. Is it a couple of people or feedback? Please, one by one, I got two names. Um, uh, Jason Mosbar. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Jason. Okay, uh, this is Jason Mosbar. Um, I live at 5010 Black Lake Boulevard. We also have two other parcels on Black Lake. We can't hear him. I'm also the president yeah. of Save, uh, Save Black Lake. And we are the nonprofit organization. Um, one item I want to bring up first of all is the last gentleman that just spoke. It is confusing. I think it was bad timing, but the document that you got with the chemicals is a completely different application than what is being talked or assessed for in this hearing. This hearing is reflecting an alum treatment for the algae problems. Uh, the other is a different process that is for noxious weeds on the lake. Uh, that is no part of this hearing. So two completely separate items. I'd also like to say that Save Black Lake, as a nonprofit organization, uh, we are in favor of a new assessment to be approved, allowing the treatment for the blue-green algae. Um, <clears throat> with the new assessment, uh, we, we do want to have maybe some consideration on the time that it is assessed due to the pandemic and people and families um, being affected in their households with their income levels right now. And maybe by the time this is assessed, one will be pulled out of that, but just wanted to have it duly noted. Um, so some of that being said, uh, we have lived on Black Lake for about the last six years. Uh, we have some um, small children uh, and pets, and we also, as a family, are in favor of the treatment. Uh, we would like to have a clean lake uh, for our family and not have to worry about our kids getting in the lake or our animals uh, getting into the lake. Um, and then uh, Carrie spoke a little bit earlier uh, on our behalf, tre Treasurer, in regards to things that uh, Save Black Lake is working towards. Uh, I think another gentleman talked about the, the ditch. Um, we are, that is one of our uh, agendas now, is we are looking at getting better flow in the lake. Um, we have one person on our board that is working on Black Lake River uh, and assessing how we might be able to get that reopened up. Right now, all of our outflow is going through the ditch. Um, the ditch is a man-made structure, um, and then it dumps into Percival Creek. Most of the level changes that we've experienced and outflow problems have been beavers in the ditch. Uh, trying to plug up that in like they have on the Black Lake or the Black River side. Uh, we have been in contact uh, almost monthly this with Lassie County. Uh, they have a beaver uh, um, task force that they go in and help remove the beavers that are causing the issues with our levels. Uh, they monitor it weekly, the level of the, and the level of the lake. Uh, and they send uh, people in boats down uh, the ditch to, uh, to assess whether it's a, a beaver problem or not. Um, 
that's kind of all I've got. If there's any questions, I'll be more than happy to address any of those. Thank you, sir. Can you please repeat or maybe spell your last name? It's M-O-S-E-D-A-R. Thank you. I appreciate your comment. Sure. Is, is there anybody else who would like to provide public testimony this afternoon who has joined us via conference call? Yes. yes. Uh, please state your name, your address, and you have three minutes. Okay. My name is Greg Riggleman. I live at 7412 Lake High Street Southwest, Olympia 98512, a resident for 15 years. I'm just echo a lot of things you've already heard, but just uh, you'll hear from me too. Uh, not enough notice was given regarding this. Uh, seven days is not enough, especially if you're not getting it until two days ago because you've been out. Uh, yes, we need something about the blue green algae, definitely. Long for the homeowners on the lake to be the sole financial supply to do that. It has to come from many sources. Uh, the other things that were passed to clean up weeds some time ago, everybody that lived up a hill that was putting fertilizer on their property, they all participated with the assessment. And they should as well be included in this uh, amendment to, or assessment to fund this, not just the residents. Uh, and the, confusion as to how much somebody's going to pay. The numbers are all over the place, and none of that makes sense. There's just way too much confusion. Uh, and that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Can you spell his name? Thank you, sir. Can you please spell your last name? R-I-G-E-L-M-A-N. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to provide public testimony who has joined us via conference call? None. And uh, no other members of the public are on Zoom then, either? No. All right. Now we'll go back. Do you want to go to Tim or Jennifer? Yeah, I would probably like to um, give the floor to Jennifer. Um, I agree. And just to give you a, her perspective on the letter that you received um, related to this matter. Thank you. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Jennifer Walker, Public Works Director. Um, I won't go through the um, entire letter, and I'm not speaking for or against the special assessment. I simply wanted to highlight for the board the financial impacts of the special assessment to the Parks and Trails Fund. And so specifically, um, there are two parks that are on um, within the Black Lake Special Use District. Um, Kennedale and Garen Park, we pay, the county pays approximately $15,745 annually for the, uh, to the Black Lake Special Use District. The proposed combined special assessment charge would be an additional $10,725. So over 20 years, that's $214,508. Um, we have just for the the board's information, we have put in, um, as we're preparing for the 21-22 biennium report, uh, budget, we have put in a policy level request um, to um, uh, account for the additional expenses should the, the um, special assessment be approved. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Do you have any questions or comments? Any questions or comments? No, thank you, Jennifer, very much. Uh, did Tim have anything further to add? No. Yes. Um, no, not not at this time. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tim. So at this time, I am going to say that uh, uh, there's no further testimony. Yeah. So, and maybe next steps, we'll I'll coordinate with Tim uh, to uh, schedule a follow-up uh, briefing for you to have a conversation on the public testimony that you received today. Perfect. Uh, could I make a suggestion? Go ahead, yeah. Uh, I guess I would appreciate having that discussion, but not 
with intention of making a decision. No, that's not no. intent. No, okay. yeah. uh, it will be to. It will be. I mean, too, I, I, wanna, I mean, we're going to make the decision someday, but I don't want to be rushed into this. No, it will be two separate. Um, okay. Uh, dates. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Take going to take time. We get a lot more information, and we'll need to digest it. Right. And research. All right. Thank you. So, is there a motion then to close this public hearing? Move to close the public hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close the public hearing. Any discussion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Public hearing is closed. Thank you all very much for your patience and joining in.